Number 8. Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam In April 2011, construction began on the Grand Renaissance Dam in the Benishan Gulgumuz region of Ethiopia. The Salina Constraturi Company was awarded a $4.7 billion engineering, construction and procurement contract to begin the project. Funded by the government and the people of Ethiopia, the dam is meant to serve the inhabitants of Egypt and Sudan as well, who largely rely on the Nile River for fresh water and trade. The dam's primary purpose is electricity production in order to relieve the acute energy shortage that's burdening Ethiopia, but it will also work as an electricity export for neighboring countries. While it's not finished yet, the Grand Renaissance Dam is slated to be the biggest hydroelectric power plant in Africa and will be among the 20 largest in the entire world. The team working on the project began filling the reservoir in July of 2020, and by August of that same year, the water level increased 1,772 feet, a whopping 130 feet higher than the bottom of the river. The second phase of the project was completed on July 19, 2021, further increasing water levels of the Nile to 1,886 feet. On February 20, 2022, the Grand Renaissance Dam produced electricity for the first time, delivering power to the grid at a rate of 375 megawatts. Then, in early August 2022, the reservoir was filled once again, bringing the river's depth to 1,969 feet. That same month, another 375 megawatt turbine was commissioned. The dam may have a long time to go before being fully completed, as tensions between Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan fester. Unless Ethiopia decides to sign an agreement that would protect the other country's interests and rights in the Nile waters, the project may be halted. Number 7. Site W The Hanford Site, also known as Site W, is a decommissioned nuclear production complex that's operated by the U.S. federal government. The facility occupies 586 square miles, which is about half of the total area of Rhode Island. The site is situated in a desert environment in an area that receives less than 10 inches of rainfall every year. It's located in Benton County along the Columbia River in the state of Washington, and it was established in 1943. Initiated as part of the Manhattan Project, the nuclear site housed the Hanford Engineer Works and B Reactor, which was the world's first ever full-scale plutonium production reactor. Plutonium that was manufactured at the site was also utilized in the making of the first atomic bomb. Throughout the Cold War, which took place between 1947 and 1991, the project expanded to include five massive plutonium processing complexes and nine nuclear reactors. The site then went on to produce most of the plutonium that was used in over 60,000 weapons that were created for the U.S. nuclear arsenal. During this period in history, nuclear technology was developing rapidly, and scientists working at the site managed to achieve major technical accomplishments when it came to production. But after a sufficient amount of plutonium had been produced, Site W's reactors were shut down, and the facility closed its doors for good in 1971. Unfortunately, though, many of the site's waste disposal practices and safety procedures were ineffective, resulting in the release of large amounts of radioactive materials into the Columbia River and into the air. Site W then quickly became the focus of the United States' largest environmental cleanup. Efforts to rid the site of radioactive materials were still ongoing in 2023, with more than 10,000 workers employed to help with the cleanup activities. Number 6. The Burj Khalifa The Burj Khalifa, or the Burj Dubai, as it was known prior to its 2010 inauguration, is the world's tallest building located in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. The skyscraper, with a height of 2,722 feet, has been the tallest structure and building on the planet since it was topped out in 2009, surpassing the previous record holder in Taiwan, the Taipei 101, by more than 1,000 feet. Construction on the skyscraper began in 2004, and it only took five years of continuous work to complete the building's exterior in 2009. The Burj Khalifa's primary structure is made of reinforced concrete and, interestingly, some of the tower's structural steel was taken from the Palace of the Republic, the former Parliament of East Germany. The building was opened to the public in 2010 as part of a new development project called Downtown Dubai. The skyscraper itself, however, was designed to be the center point of a large-scale mixed-use development. 
The plan to construct the Burj Khalifa was based on the government's decision to move away from an oil-based economy and for the city of Dubai to gain worldwide recognition for its architectural achievements. The skyscraper's name is in honor of Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan, the former president of the United Arab Emirates. The Burj Khalifa was designed by the same team that designed the Sears Tower in Chicago, led by Adrian Smith of Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, an American architectural, engineering and urban planning firm. Some of the building's design was inspired by the Islamic architecture in the region, like the Great Mosque of Samarra. The tower's Y-shaped tripartite floor geometry was chosen in order to optimize hotel and residential space, and the Burj Khalifa's wings and buttressed central core are used to support the building's immense height. Number 5. Merdeka 118 Formerly known as the Warasan Merdeka Tower, Merdeka 118 is a 118-story skyscraper that's situated in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. At 2,227 feet tall, it's the second tallest building in the world and is also the second tallest structure, only surpassed by the Burj Khalifa, which towers over every other building on the planet at 2,717 feet. The building's name translates to Independence and was inspired by the skyscraper's close proximity to Stadium Merdeka. Merdeka 118's spire was completed in October of 2021, but construction began four years earlier in August of 2017. At the time of writing in May of 2023, the building is slated to be finished sometime in 2024 or 2025. A mix of diamond-shaped glass facades was added to the building's design in order to signify the diversity of Malaysia. Merdeka 118 was inspired and built to resemble the outstretched hand of Tunku Abdul Rahman, who offered a gesture when he proclaimed on August 31, 1957, the independence of the country. In total, the building will consist of 18,144 panels, 1,600 tons of window frame extrusions, and 1,227,086 feet of glass. Once completed, Merdeka 118 will contain hotels, a mall, residential areas, and grade A offices, whatever that means. Construction of Merdeka 118 was halted in March of 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but work on the project resumed by the middle of May of that same year. In early June of 2021, the tower was 81% completed, and it was topped out in November. For the time being, work continues to be carried out on the tower, but once it's finished, it will stand as a monument to the Malaysian people, representing just how far the country has come in the last 60 years. Number 4. Buffalo Bills Stadium According to buffalobills.com, construction for the new Buffalo Bills Stadium is slated to be finished by July of 2026, just in time for the 2026 NFL season. The massive open-air stadium will be built on a 242-acre site and will cover roughly 1.35 million square feet. Chris Brown, a Bills insider, says the stadium will be the biggest project in western New York that's ever been built. In addition to the stadium, a 75,000-square-foot ancillary building will also be constructed on the site. The Buffalo Bills are among the NFL's most skilled teams. The tailgating, table-breaking fan base is said to be one of the most dedicated groups in all of football. But for a while now, the team has been playing in an outdated venue, which is why there are now plans in place to build a brand new stadium. The new venue will be able to hold as many as 60,000 fans and will have an expandable capacity to house special events. Premium areas of the new stadium will include ledge seats, suites, clubs and more luxurious seating products. The Buffalo Bills venue will also consist of state-of-the-art scoreboards and video, a team store, food service kitchens, concessions, locker rooms, and more. It will eventually be built in Orchard Park, where the team's current stadium is located, or in downtown Buffalo, New York. When the project moves forward, its $2.1 billion budget will certainly make it one of the largest construction projects in the world. Number 3. Goddard Base Tunnel Construction for the Goddard Base Tunnel, or GBT, began on November 4, 1999, and it wasn't finished for 16 years. The GBT is a railway tunnel that runs through the Alps mountain range in Switzerland. In June of 2016, the tunnel opened, but it wouldn't offer full service until the following December. With a route length of 35 and a half miles, it's the longest railway in the world and also holds the record for the deepest traffic tunnel. 
It's situated at the heart of the Goddard Axis and consists of a massive complex. At its core, the complex has two single-track tunnels that connect Bodio with Erstfeld, with the track passing under Sedrun in order to arrive at its destinations. The GBT is part of the NRLA project, which is short for the new railway link through the Alps. Referred to as a base tunnel, the GBT bypasses most of the Goddard railway line that already existed, which was operating at full capacity, until the new tunnel was opened. In total, the Goddard railway line has 36 tunnels, all of which make up a distance of 102,415 feet, or just shy of 20 miles. The new tunnel, however, establishes a direct path that can be utilized by heavy freight trains and high-speed rail. The GBT's main purpose is to increase the total transport capacity through the Swiss Alpine barrier, especially along the rotterdam basel genoa corridor. But more specifically, the GBT will help shift freight volumes from trucks to more efficient freight trains. By doing this, the danger of fatal road crashes caused by trucks will be significantly reduced, and so too will the environmental damage that's typically caused by heavy trucks. The GBT also provides a far faster connection between Ticino and the rest of the country, as well as between the northern and southern parts of Europe, cutting down travel time for passenger trains by a full hour. Number 2. Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge Completed in February of 2018, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, or HZMB, consists of a series of three cable stayed bridges four artificial islands, and an undersea tunnel. It's 34 miles in total and is both the longest open sea fixed link and the longest sea crossing in the entire world. The bridge spans the Zhuzhou and Lingding channels and connects the three major cities along the Pearl River Delta, Macau, Zhuhai, and Hong Kong. Designed to last 120 years, the HZMB has a budget of roughly $18.8 .8 billion, and the cost of constructing the main bridge alone was estimated at $7.56 billion, funded by the governments of Hong Kong, mainland China, and Macau. It was originally slated to be finished in late 2016, but it took an extra year for it to be fully completed, finally opening to the public on October 24, 2018. The bridge was first proposed in the 1980s by Gordon Wu, the founder of Hopewell Holdings, a major property developer based in Hong Kong. The inspiration for the HZMB apparently came from the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, which opened in 1964. The Advance Work Coordination Group was then established in 2003 in order to coordinate the project. And in August of 2008, the central government of China, as well as the governments of Macau and Guangdong, Hong Kong, agreed to finance a whopping 42% of the total costs of the bridge. The remaining 58% was covered by bank loans from the Bank of China. Construction on the bridge's Chinese side began on December 15, 2009, but the HZMB's Hong Kong section didn't start until December 2011, after a legal challenge delayed their initial start date. The last bridge tower was built on June 2, 2016, and 14 days later, the 15,940-foot straight section of the HZMB's undersea tunnel was completed. However, the final tunnel joint wasn't installed until May 2, 2017, and the main bridge was finished in early July of that same year. But by February 2018, the whole thing was done, only losing 19 workers along the way. And at number one, Samsung Semiconductor Factory. In the modern world, everyone relies on semiconductors. Computers, smartphones, cars, medical equipment, and televisions all rely on semiconductors to function. And so, it makes sense that the new Samsung Semiconductor Factory would have a budget of over $25 billion. The electronics company based in South Korea is currently building a new plant in Taylor, Texas, just 30 miles northeast of Austin. This undertaking is apparently the company's largest investment they've ever made in the U.S. The massive 1,200-acre project is slated to cover 6 million square feet upon completion. Work was supposed to begin in 2022, but due to inflation, costs for the building materials like glass and concrete rose from 8.3% to 22.2% compared from February 2021 to February of 2022. This alone seems to have delayed construction, despite the company's claims of still being on their projected timeline. A 
According to Samsung, the new factory will manufacture advanced logic semiconductors, or advanced computer chips, which are typically used in phones and other electronics. Once they break ground on the new facility, it will be one of the largest construction projects in the world. Which of these mega projects would you most like to visit? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.